guys, it is Hunter Unit 751 back again, bringing you another edition of the Halo Jumping Top 10. Uh, we are back again in the Library of Knowledge uh, to bring you another Halo Jumping related Top 10. And joining us for this episode, we have the man who's been, I guess, you know, locked out of the library in these first two episodes. It's Alpha Puma. <coughs> Hello, I'm, I'm glad to be here, finally, in the library and not just in the Jedi Council, so, uh... Yes, we, he's been locked up to... in the Jedi Council for about <laughs> nine months. So, uh, we're back again for episode three. We've obviously covered in our first two episodes, um, two very interesting topics with, um... What was it? Top ten jumpers of all time and top ten Xbox One competitors. Now... We're going to move away from competitors themselves and look at something else that's pretty much uh, always part of Halo jumping and Halo jumping tournaments, and that is failures. Specifically, in this episode, we are going to be looking at the top 10 most shocking failures in Halo jumping history. So, dun dun dun. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so the requirements for this were basically uh, failures that were most shocking, kind of like the first time you saw them. Like when you watched the episodes and you watched the tournaments, you were like, oh my god, I didn't see that coming. Or The more shock value you got from it, the better. At the same time, I also decided to take into account, um, you know, is this failure, you know, two, three years later, still considered shocking in the grand scheme of you know whatever course it happened on uh one other thing that's slightly different with this um countdown because the first two basically so that i had something to do uh i chose the 10 failures or well i suppose in the case of the first two episodes the 10 competitors that made the list this one we did a little bit differently we kind of got a a consensus i asked Anyone that decide to answer the question, you know, what's the most shocking failures in your eyes? And basically, I handpicked the ten that came up the most, uh, well, that came up on the most occasions by the most different people. But Puma, shocking failures. Yeah. You yourself are, uh, you know, you, you're no, uh, you're no stranger to a shocking failure. You've probably seen a lot of shocking failures down the years. Um, what is your take on uh, on what this list is going to be like? I think this list definitely is going to be a, a compilation of a lot of skilled jumpers at some of their their lower moments uh, in their jumping careers. Uh, definitely, I can see myself on this list, and I definitely see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, throughout the courses the impact, not only the short term and just that tournament, but the long term impact that the that failure had as well. Yeah, or like the uh, big what ifs that could happen if those I failures think, didn't uh, happen. I think the thing you said at the beginning sums up quite nicely. Some of the best competitors of all time having a bad day at the office. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. With that in mind, I guess. Let's get into the 10 failures that did make the countdown. And they are in alphabetical order the following. Uh, Buddy Jumps' stage 1 failure in Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 11. Drago's failure in stage 1 of Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 11. Drago's failure on stage 2 in Ninja Warrior of Halo Tournament 12. Hunter Unit 751's stage 1 failure in Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 20, Smokey's Stage 1 Failure in Spartan Sasuke Tournament 12, Smokey's Stage 1 Failure in Ninja Warrior of Halo Tournament 19, there's a lot of Stage 1s here, Swan's Stage 1 Failure in Spartan Sasuke Tournament 4, Ump's Stage 1 Failure in Spartan Sasuke Tournament 19, Puma's Stage 1 Failure in Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 18, and also Weapon Mats Stage 1 Failure in Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 18. Some pretty, pretty iconic ten. failures in there. Yeah, I agree with the 10. I remember prior we had talked, there was one that we had on the list that we decided to opt out and add another one in. Uh, but that one was also shocking. And 
I gotta say, I agree with this 10. I couldn't think of any other that I would deem more shocking than these 10. Yeah, um, just to clarify, yeah, there was... Obviously, I'll go through the ones that missed out that were in contention. Um, I decided not to put my Tournament 21 failure on here, but uh, obviously the Tournament 20 failure is, and we'll get into that a little bit more, obviously, later. Um, other ones that didn't make the list, Elite failing Stage 1 in Ninja War of Halo Tournament 14 when he failed the jump hang. That was shocking at the time. Flame failing Stage 1 in Spartan Sasuke Tournament 14 after five Stage 1 clears in a row, I believe. Um, Swan failing Stage 1 in Spartan Sasuke Tournament 19 on his comeback when it looked like he was going to clear, and then he didn't. Oh, by the way, guys, the ghost of Snars is here, in case you hear any noises. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh, we don't have any special guest like hidden in the shadows, apart from Snars's ghost, uh, to give us like a secondary list. Uh, so basically, we've got Puma's list, and we're going to be going through that. Uh, with that in mind, Puma, let's start at the bottom uh, from what your bottom five is from ten to six, just the names. All right, so number 10, we have uh, Weapon Matt in Tournament 18 of Halo Ninja Warrior. Number 9, we got Alpha Puma from Tournament 18, Halo Ninja Warrior. Number 8 is probably going to be a, a hot take, controversial to some, but uh, Hunter Unit 751 in Tournament 20 of Halo Ninja Warrior. Uh, tournament 7 is Swan, Tournament 4 is Spartan Sasuke, and Tournament 6 is Drago in Tournament 12 of Ninja Warrior of Halo. Okay. Uh, weapon Matt's stage one failure in tournament 18 of Halo Ninja Warrior. Yeah, so his failure, uh, obviously he had back-to-back -back, uh, first place performances in Halo Ninja Warrior, and he was looking at one of the top guys. But Weapon Matt, one thing that I remembered throughout all of it, Weapon Matt prior to tournament 18 was very inactive and wasn't around a lot, so he was a little rusty going into jumping. And I think that definitely played a factor into his fail. It was still definitely shocking with him being number 49, him being the tied uh, or first place the last two tournaments. Uh, but at that time, he was a very inactive person, so it's not as shocking looking back at it compared to the other failures. It was almost like I suppose it's not really a shock to have a success, but it was almost like one shock to another because Weffermat obviously came out of nowhere. To get that first place and that final stage in tournament 16 he obviously then backed that up in 17 so i guess from the point of view looking at it that way to then suddenly go to fail stage one and then he's obviously failed stage one ever since yeah i agree with that i think his uh especially as of late weapon has become a really great jumper again but at that time it was starting to look like he was gonna leave jumping or at least not be as active in jumping. With that in mind, the comparisons, I suppose, that can then be made with your failure in Tournament 18, which is obviously at number 9. Yeah, so going into that tournament, uh, a lot of people know that I am not good at moving object uh, obstacles. Uh, so people, uh, a lot of people were worried that I would fail that obstacle, at least on one of my attempts. Uh, and during it, I had not practiced doing the double swing. I had always just sprinted into the bar and ran. So I did an adjustment mid because I couldn't get the sprint off in time. So I swung back, and I mistimed the jump. Uh, after having the seven straight clears and doing really well having two first places uh, and everything like that, like obviously there was still a lot of uh, Puma's going to do great, always consistent stage three contestant. But that tournament, I felt... It was the first time since Tournament 13 that I felt nervous about a Stage 1. And it, I think it showed throughout my run. Yeah. Um, I think at the time, but also when we look back on it now, I see that tournament, for you at least, as kind of like, okay, Puma is finally the last guy to go on Stage 1. Um, so we can see, you know, how will Puma do as the last run on Stage 1? You know, if, if he has a good tournament, he could be the last man standing in this tournament and obviously looking back on it now it's kind of like oh no he failed stage one for the first time since his debut you know is it was it the pressure of being the last guy to go was it just 
that one obstacle specifically. Yeah, know, I definitely same agree. I, I th it was really awesome to finally be the last person to go, and it's still my only ever last person to go in a tournament. But it was, I would say, a lot of uh, a lot of my nerves in that stemmed from the obstacle itself, and I kind of just uh, had a self fulfilling pop prophecy in that tournament. <laughs> Is this, uh, this is, without, we're not going to go into it too much in this video, is this uh, prophecy um, <laughs> on a similar level to uh, some of the prophecies and stuff that have come up in the Jump Chronicles? Oh, um, the, ju the Jump Chronicles <laughs> has an entire videos, an entire anthology in itself. <laughs> I suppose what you just said about that, you know, just that one obstacle kind of scaring you... Um, that's a kind of nice little transition into the next one because I can <laughs> definitely relate to that. I, I didn't think we'd be bringing it up this early, but tell me why um, you have put my tournament twenty fail at number eight. So uh, obviously, Hunter's streak is the most impressive streak in all of jumping. Uh, the thing is, though, I guess what doesn't make it as shocking for me is that ever, ever since I joined the jumping community uh, like tournament 11 is when I became like really active it was always like the streak when is it going to end is it ever going to happen and it kind of became that idea of it's going to happen eventually the streak's going to end and it wasn't going to be like a shocking cuz like the more i felt like if it happened in like 12 or 13 or 14 it would be very shocking but the fact that you got it that long, I say it's more impressive than shocking. And it's just like a, he was going to fail eventually moment. Yeah. Um, I think in comparison, just, just specifically the tournament and the obstacle itself, um, I had the same thing that you had maybe with the swinging pendulum. That crooked wall, I've said it many a time. If I failed any other stage one obstacle in that tournament, I would have been fuming that I'd lose my streak. Uh, that way, but that crooked wall was brutal to me. I knew I could do it. I knew I could clear it, but I also knew I could fail it. So when it did happen, you know, I was I was disappointed. I think the interview afterwards kind of showed it off really nicely. I was disappointed. I was so sad that it was finally over after so many years. But at the same time, I was almost I was I was a little bit satisfied that at least I went out on an obstacle that I knew could take me out. Um, in terms of just like as a whole though, not just um, looking at that one tournament specifically, I do think though, I can I get where you're coming from though with um, with the idea that like the streak was eventually going to come to an end. So therefore, like the longer it went on, it was it became less and less surprising like when it was going to happen. Yeah, but I do think. And again, this is obviously me trying to provide an unbiased opinion. Uh, I do, I do think that when you have a streak like that, or when you have a record like that, if it's any competitor, just to see it come to an end, you know, just in the blink of an eye. Um, I don't know. I'd like to think that not many people. I don't think anyone knew that it was coming. I think me, Smokey, Fireball. Chris and Snaz that were there. I think we all did a good job of keeping it a secret because yeah, I think I we. Didn't know that, uh, I didn't know that. I didn't feel until I watched the video. Because I think we knew it was going to be shocking because, you know, we just wanted it to be this big event that was going to happen. Well, when I say big event, I mean like. The ghost. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say that. I say that when I chime in. Um, I would just say this one thing. It's one thing to lose a streak. It's another to have a streak where you never hit failed it. That's two yeah. kind of different things, which makes it even more of a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough talking. That's enough talking about me. Uh, let's move on to number seven, which is Swan in Tournament Four of Spartan Sasuke. Yeah. So. Swan, Swan was starting to become a big jumper at the time. He's starting to become a little bit of a big deal. He's probably like the the first Halo Five jumper, true, like original Halo Five jumper, to emerge from this game. And Swan and I were really close. We're still really close. We still we're still bros, but we we practiced pretty relentlessly uh, in Spartan Sasuke from tournament one to four, and we were pretty confident going to stage three 
and possibly beyond. And I, I wasn't on for his run, but I remember I join a party with him, and he tells me what happens. And, like, essentially, I'm just like, bruh, what are you doing? And <laughs> it, it is just shocking. Like, being a new jumper, there's always those nerves, and I think he just got the nerves to, like, times 1,000 on that and just cheese the first obstacle. But that was so shocking, especially since he had so much potential and promise from the first three tournaments of Spartan Sasuke that it just was ridiculous looking back from the first three compared to the fourth and then how he did afterward as well. It just looks incredibly goofy compared to the other results that Swan has. Yeah, because I think when you look at the rest of his record um, up to Tournament 15 obviously, um, that was his only Stage 1 failure. So the fact that you, you beat stage you beat stage one in every other tournament, and then the one tournament when you do fail stage one, you go out on the first obstacle. Um, I think it was avoidable, as as I recall. I think if he got a save jump, he would have been fine. But you know, it just led to a an unbelievably shocking moment. Probably one of the first, if not the first, like big shocking moment on Rog's course. Um, yeah, I think that is like the true first shock of uh, of Rog's course. Because at the time, going into tournament four, if you had a bet on him winning, it would either be Swan, Ump, or me. And obviously Ump ended up winning. But it was the idea of a, a top jumper, not only a top jumper, but a new top jumper. Uh, a new, like one of the new guys showing a lot of promise and potential and being really cool and calm throughout all of it and then just having like their first like big nerves and like we all know swan swan's a pretty chill guy overall but uh it felt like that time was the first time he got super nervous yeah nerves is not something i'd normally associate with swan uh, <laughs> yeah in in, in 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 not just in jumping but just in in anything really yeah um so just missing out on the top five is of course the iconic competitor that is Drago. His stage two failure in Ninja War of Halo Tournament 12, the only failure on this list that wasn't a stage one failure. Um, talk me through that one. Yeah, so the reason I found this shocking, it felt like uh, it seems like it's the beginning of the end of Drago's dominance in a sense and it's kind of shocking to see that um, like that idea of like you kind of always look back like for example I'll compare it to like actual Sasuke like Nagano in 24 like it's an incredibly shocking failure one of the most in, the biggest in Sasuke history but it's also like noted as like the beginning of decline and that is I feel like the moment for Drago and it's an incredibly shocking little minor mistake uh, trying to do a pretty dangerous technique, but uh, it ended up biting him, and then he never really got to the level that he was prior. Yeah, I think I think the big difference here with Drago is just because of how consistent Drago was up to that point. Um, and not just on my course. I, it's, it's hard to, like, compare the dates... Uh, because obviously they're, they're two different tournaments, but I want to say around, I'm pretty certain around the same time was when Drago also had his Tournament 7 final stage failure on Smokey's course when it looked like he was going to get total victory uh, and obviously Buddy got it and Drago didn't. Um, and I think those two failures were, I agree, probably the sucker punch that subsequently led to the beginning of the decline for Drago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think also as a heads up, Drago's Tournament 7 failure was actually the one that we were debating that Puma said earlier. It was initially in the in the top 10, and uh, Puma convinced me that a different one should be. Um, so Drago's failure can be like the unofficial 11 in... Uh, his, his final <laughs> stage failure. Yeah. From from my point of view, I guess, it's a similar thing to Weapon Matt in, that, in terms of stats, in that he, he had two first place finishes in the previous two tournaments. He was, he was number 100 in that tournament. Um, there was a big thing about him finally being 
the last guy to go because Ree had been the last guy to go for so long. And then on his first opportunity, you know, it produced an unbelievable shock that he's never really re he never really recovered from. And although obviously he's back now in a you know less he's less involved obviously, but he is back. Um, exactly. It's just never been the same since. Yeah. Let's move on to the top five, starting from number five up to number one. Hit me with it, Puma. All right. So number five is. Smokey in Tournament 19 of Ninja Warrior of Halo. Number 4 is Smokey in Spartan Sasuke Tournament 12. Number 3 is Drago in Tournament 11 of Halo Ninja Warrior. Number 2 is Buddy in Tournament 11 of Halo Ninja Warrior. And number 1 is Ump in Spartan Sasuke Tournament 19. We've got back-to-back -back Smokies coming up here. Let's yeah. start with Smokey at number 5 on Ninja Warrior of Halo. Yeah, so obviously 19 is the famous murder course it was killed 97 people uh and smoky being 100 it, it's like he's the guy who's gonna redeem this tournament he's gonna be the one to save it he's gonna be clutch he's gonna come out get first place do incredibly well and then he just fails the spider so it's definitely like that big shock where you're kind of like you're banking on this guy to be the savior of the tournament uh because he's always come up clutch in the past and, and this time he doesn't come up clutch yeah, I think with that failure, it's... So, one other failure that I want to reference that I thought about making, about whether it should make the list or not, was actually an interesting one. Spiteful, when he failed Stage 1 in Tournament 17 on my course, because that was the end of Spiteful's streak, which was obviously a record-breaking streak at the time, uh, beating Stage 1 seven times in a row. And I realized pretty quickly that... Even though it was a big streak at the time, the reality is it's not the record streak anymore. So I couldn't justify having Spiteful and Smokey's failures both on the list. Therefore, because of that, I ended up with Smokey's Tournament 19 failure. And as we said, the failure meant that his Stage 1 clear streak of eight tournaments in a row came to an end. It marked his first Stage 1 failure since Tournament 10. It meant every All-Star failed Stage 1 in that tournament. It just summed up a really rough tournament. I think you're right. I think even though, despite the failure after failure after failure, at no point did you think, oh God, is, is Smokey going to fail here? Like, every, a lot of people would have still thought, you know what, Smokey's going to pull through. Despite all these failures, he's, he's going to pull through. And then when it yeah. didn't happen, um, just led to... A huge shock. Definitely. Um, but, with that in mind, what is it then that makes his Tournament 12 failure on Spartan Sasuke um, more shocking than his Ninja War of Halo failure? So, Smo Smokey's failure in Spartan Sasuke, it feels... I think, obviously, Smokey's entire success throughout Spartan Sasuke is one of the most decorated... Of Spartan Sasuke's history, probably second most. Uh, double total uh, victor, which is he's the only person to ever do that. And the way Smokey failed, it feels so unsmoky that it's just shocking. Like the fail, a uh, not very technical obstacle. It was just a simple sprint jump, and it just feels very. It, yeah, I guess the best way to put it is it feels very unsmoky in the sense that. I would never have guessed Smokey to fail that obstacle in that type of way. And especially uh, how he's continuously performed throughout the rest of that show. Uh, it was very surprising. Yeah, I think the two things I took from it were, obviously, the fail itself at the time, because I think he had four first place finishes in a row coming into yeah. that tournament. Uh, he was obviously, he'd had his first total victory. Um, and it wasn't, it was a stage one that took a lot of people out, but I don't think it was a bloodbath. I think there was still like a lot of clears in that yeah. tournament. There was um, still a decent amount. And the obstacle that he failed, it was probably one of the biggest killers of the day. But it was yeah. still an obstacle that you wouldn't expect. And it was an obstacle that 
it feels very straightforward. Like the jumping spider that you had in nineteen is failure. It was an incredibly hard obstacle, and you tried to do the harder technique, which I can respect rather than doing the boon pay, which was able to nineteen. Uh, but in Spartan Sasuke, it was just you jump on this, you swing, and then you jump the next one, and you just undershot it, which is very rare to see Smokey undershoot something like that. Yeah. I think on the uh, on the flip side of it, because you could almost do it as a comparison, his um, his Tournament 7 failure on Spartan Sasuke, which was kind of the lowest of the low it's been for Smokey, because he just, he failed, it's actually probably similar to what you just said, he, he failed in the inside of the Jumping Spider um, in a very odd way, you just think like, oh wow, Smokey doesn't normally fail obstacles like this. But, he then obviously followed that up with getting his first total victory, and I guess the same thing happened here, where he had this Tournament 12 failure, but he more than made up for it in the next tournament, when he yeah. uh, he went and got he got himself a second total victory. Definitely. Um, <laughs> so... That brings us to the top three, and now we have the other Drago failure. Uh, his yeah. stage one exit in Tournament 11 of Halo Ninja Warrior. So, me being there, this was when I was the new kid on the block, and seeing Drago, it was like... It was like, like meeting like the top guy. You're just like, wow, this is the, the man. He's gonna clutch it, especially... He was one of the last guys to go in Tournament 11, and Tournament 11 was one of the biggest bloodbath shockers of Smokey's entire course. And Drago failing, it really felt like it was finally like that transition of the former great jumpers of the Reach and 4 era were gonna be replaced by like the new gen of the Halo 4, the people that come in through MCC. And it really felt like a very sad ending in that sense where Drago, again, was still like seen as the guy who can save the tournament, but he just didn't have it anymore, and he ended up failing. And it was a really shocking and sad fail in that sense of this is like the end of Drago, and in that sense, the reach and four jumpers consistency. Yeah, it was his first stage one failure on Halo Ninja Warrior. It was, it looked like, for a long time, it was obviously going to be his last run uh, on Smokey's course before he obviously came back. Um, if, I, I think, if we compare, like, where his other failure that's on this list, we said that was, like, the beginning of the end. I think this failure was definitely, like, the tipping point. It was, I mean, yeah, well, I think it, it was, it, like, it was the, the it, last it, nail in the coffin, I it, felt it, like. Yeah, it, in some ways, it was the end, because obviously he didn't compete again for many years on Smokey's yeah. course. I think also what made it worse was the fact that it still looked like he was going to do it, because he'd obviously got to the last obstacle, and it was one of those you just didn't see it coming. I think I think once he got there, a lot of people would have probably thought, ah, Drago's going to clear again, you know, this is going to be his 10th his stage one clear, I think it was. Um, yeah. With that in mind, what is it then that makes it Buddy's failure in the same tournament, Tournament 11, uh, bigger or higher than Drago's failure? So, him at number two. So in my opinion, I think if you just count for jumping as a whole rather than jumping as Ninja Warrior, I think Buddy is the best jumper ever. So then when it comes to this, Buddy failing the Circle Hammer, a seemingly very easy obstacle... Uh, was incredibly shocking, especially, again, I was there to watch it as the new kid. And I was there was, as well. <laughs> yeah, it was an incredibly shocking fail, knowing that this grand champion can just fail the second obstacle of a stage, and it's just, just like that. And then also, especially looking at the very next tournament, Tournament 12, where he's less than a second away from total victory. A fraction it just shows, of a second. Yeah, yeah it just shows... Like, one little minor mistake can kill you so easily, but then, like, it shows the true skill he actually has. So, I guess them being so close to each other really highlights how shocking it was and how talented Buddy is as a jumper and it, how it was just a crazy fail. That, probably the craziest one I've witnessed. 
that uh, three tournament spell uh, <laughs> it really showed both ends of the spectrum tournament 10 he gets to he fails the second to last jump on stage 3 tournament 11 goes out on the second obstacle of stage 1 tournament 12 comes within a fraction of a second of achieving a second total victory yeah um, I would also give a quick shout out to Buddy's first obstacle failure that was another one that almost made the list uh, <laughs> in tournament 17 a Halo Ninja Warrior and I think yeah. that failure just as much as the tournament 11 one can show I don't want to say Buddy's inconsistency because even though it is inconsistency it was more it, it really just shows how much Buddy didn't practice if that makes sense yeah, because he, it, he, he, choo he chooses not to don't get me wrong um, yeah but you can clearly see the tournaments where he does well. You can clearly see he's put the practice in for them, for them. And the ones when he doesn't, as we've highlighted with these two, um, <laughs> it it really didn't work out well for him. So I guess that brings us to number one, uh, which is Ump Double Ump's Spartan Sasuke Stage One failure in Tournament Nineteen. Um, I'm sure you could have probably expected this question coming since it's at uh, it's at number one, but it, he's the one you know he's the one thousandth competitor in that tournament. He's earned it because he's obviously been the best competitor um, across the the history of Spartan Sasuke up to that point. Yeah, what is it that puts Ump's failure at number one as the most shocking failure of all time? When in comparison, my failure, when I'm the number 1,000 <laughs> on Smokey's course, is all the way down at 8th. Um, right. Let's talk about the failure first, and then maybe then yeah, the comparison so between the for, two. For the first thing, failing the butterfly wall, such a simplistic kind of throwaway obstacle in any course, whether that's on Spartan Sasuke or when Smokey had it. It's just kind of a throwaway to kill some newcomers and maybe like some bad re uh, regulars. You never expect the butterfly wall to do damage. Tournament 19 as a whole is the most successful tournament in terms of Sage 1 for ROG ever. Uh, um, having the history that he's had on Spartan Sasuke being the most accomplished competitor of all time. And just expecting the same. And I think it would have not been number one if he failed like the last obstacle of stage one or that really hard ball obstacle rog had after the warp wall but yeah i think failing the butterfly wall of all things on a course where 17 people beat stage one it it just kind of surprised so what then in comparison because don't get me wrong the crooked wall was probably the toughest obstacle on smoky stage one in that course uh in that tournament when i failed it but you know, a lot of people got past that obstacle. A decent number of people, I think, eleven clears uh, on that stage one. Yeah, I. Think What's the other just, factors then? I think it's the factor of Ump still being the number one guy, in the sense with Halo Ninja Warrior. There's a lot of arguments to see who is the top guy. I think right now it's obviously Fireball, but at that time when there was no champion and there was kind of like this power vacuum, Ump just got off the final stage. You have uh, you had a stage 2 failure in the previous tournament. Fireball was not had not made the final stage, but has gotten so close. Uh, and then there were so many other people that had the potential to get to the final stage. It kind of seemed like there were a bunch of people that could do really well. Whereas it seemed like Ump was consistently, no matter how well people did, he was always the undisputed number one guy in Spartan Sasuke. And a fail, very mean. simplistic yeah. second obstacle, is very upsetting and shocking. I, I can I can understand actually then from that point of view um, why you put my failure so low because maybe at the time I wasn't the, the number one competitor on Smokey's course anymore. As a whole, obviously, I was celebrated as the number one because I was obviously number one thousand. But at the time, I can I can see what you mean. Think looking yes. at it that way. Um, the the failure was still shocking, but I wasn't failing as the the best competitor on the course, you know, at that time or anymore. Yeah. I think Rog told me 
but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, Rog, um, that that was Omp's first failure on Spartan Sasuke, where it meant he didn't finish in the top seven. Every other tournament he'd done, I think, he finished seventh or higher um, on his run, including, obviously, ones when he's failed stage one, which, again, probably shows just how how well he'd done up to that point. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess uh, that pretty much covers it. So, just to finish it off and to wrap it up, Puma, let's hear your full list uh, once again from number 10 up to number 1. Alrighty, so number 10 we have Weapon Met in Tournament 18 of Halo Ninja Warrior. Number 9 is myself at Tournament 18 of Halo Ninja Warrior. Hunter in Tournament 20 of Halo Ninja Warrior. Swan in Tournament 4 of Spartan Sasuke. Drago in Tournament 12 of Ninja Warrior of Halo. Number 5 is Smokey in Tournament 19 of Ninja Warrior of Halo. Number 4 is Smokey in Spartan Sasuke 12. Uh, number three is Drago in uh, Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 11. Number two is Buddy in Halo Ninja Warrior Tournament 11. And number one is Ump in Spartan Sasuke 19. And that wraps it up. The 10 most shocking failures. Um, d well, obviously Puma's list. I want you guys, of course, to leave your own list in the comments down below. You know, would you have picked the same 10? If you did, what order would you have put them in? You know, would you have put my failure higher, a, a lot higher? Um, would you, <laughs> would you have put something else on the list? Let's say, would there have been another failure that you think should have been in the top ten? Um, leave it all in the comments below, and of course, if you have another suggestion for a top ten, leave that in the comments below, and uh, you know, maybe we'll cover it in the future. And of course, if you guys want to appear in a future episode then again let me know in the comments down below um i guess that covers it puma i hope you've enjoyed this one puma i think it's been I very did. insightful it really fun. yeah um, i love giving my commentary out <laughs> yeah <laughs> obviously puma a wealth of knowledge on this stuff just as much as me um with that in mind guys i hope you've enjoyed this video and I will leave you with my own version of what this list would be. And we'll see you guys again very, very soon for another episode of the Halo Jumping Top 10. See you, everybody. See you guys next time. Goodbye.